Hey everyone, Mars the Troller here. So today we have a video about Spider-Man PS4. So this is my first uh, like in-depth review, I guess. I've never even reviewed a game on this channel, but I just decided to go with Spider-Man PS4 just because it is really freaking good. Now, I had this game for quite a while. Uh, I never ended up finishing playing it, so I did a full restart, and I did end up finishing it. Bro, Spider-Man for PS5 is about to be here. I need to finish this masterpiece. So that's what I did. All right, let's get right into this review. So the very first reason why I absolutely love this game is because the pacing in it is so refreshing. It's so amazing that I can play at any point and I will be highly, highly entertained. Not many games have this quality. A lot of them usually have a really good beginning and a really good ending. And then the middle is just really boring to get through. But no, this was fun through the entire story campaign i'm playing the dlc now and it's still pretty pretty fun i think the regular campaign was better than dlc but yeah it's it's definitely just amazing um i can't wait to see how this game runs on ps5 because it is extremely gorgeous okay uh, i played on a 4k tv 1080p ps4 i'm assuming because it's a ps4 slim and it, it was just breathtaking to be honest with you the fact that i can play that game on my ps4 it already looks next gen to me uh, I'm not sure how much farther they can really take it because it's already so good. But yeah, the graphics in this game are amazing. They are on par with some of the movies that I've seen from Spider-Man. Any screenshot that you see from this game, it literally looks like you took a screenshot from the movie itself. Because that's how good this game really is. That's how beautiful it is. When you take a snapshot, the camera function in the game is amazing. Everything about it is just beautiful to look at. So some of the people were getting like kind of frustrated that the PS5 Peter Parker looks like weird compared to the PS4 one. I am actually saying that I think PS5 Peter Parker looks more like the actor in Spider-Man. So I just think that PS5 Spider-Man in my opinion looks better. And if you don't agree, I don't know why you would like harass the guys that made it, but yeah, it's pretty good. My next point is that I actually really appreciated the use of the Sinister Six because personally what I thought was that the entire game was going to be based off them, assuming that I was going to have to pick one off each one at a time, but I was uh, pretty pretty surprised seeing that there wasn't, I'm assuming, at least for me, it's the first time seeing that uh, Master Lee, Mr. Mr. Lee character, uh, he was really cool and Mr. Negative was in, was amazing as well. I, I, I sincerely thought that, that was really cool that they decided to make a brand new villain for us instead of giving us what they could have very easily in fact have just done and it would have still made the fans extremely happy if all you had to do was give us Sinister Six but they went above and beyond and that to me is really awesome uh, I'm glad that we did end up though getting the Sinister Six the Sinister Six because uh, it's just a staple for usually every single Spider-Man classic and I definitely enjoyed when they were there but I'm glad they were not there for the majority of the game because it would have gotten a little repetitive. My next point is I think the story wrapped up pretty nicely. The boss fight at the end was really, really good. There were some parts that uh, definitely made me question the T rating <laughs> and throughout the game. But yeah, uh, the boss fight was amazing. The ending uh, just perfectly ties into Miles Morales. I, I didn't know because at, at one point I wasn't sure if I was going to finish the game by Miles Morales, but now I'm so glad that I did because it ties it in literally perfectly into what we could do with Miles Morales. Thankfully though, it seems like the the story that we got for this, like the main story is complete. I'm glad they decided to give us a nice ending, not leaving us on a cliffhanger or nothing. So yeah, I'm very, very impressed with their storytelling throughout of the whole uh, campaign but more importantly the ending was amazing and now let's talk about the boss fights actually so for the first boss i'm gonna call him hank i don't know why i don't know why i gave him the name hank because that's what's been in my mind this whole time i had to look it up just to find the actual name his name is kingpin for some reason he looks like hank from breaking bad i'm not sure too why there's a slight similarity but i don't think he really looks like that it's just what my brain has decided so we're gonna go with hank so Hank's boss fight is what really, like just from the start, I love this game. I knew it was a masterpiece from the second he started. 
because this boss fight is unlike any other I have seen or played on the my PS4. We started off this like entrance sequence, I guess you could call it, by going in, destroying a bunch of his henchmen. It was amazing. The rocket launchers really, I was like, wow, the parkour scenes were cool. All Every single th detail leading up to this was amazing. And then once we got there, it did not disappoint. We started off with hitting into barriers and such and then going in for the kill and not kill because it's a tea game going in for the imprisonment and his final words were that the city was going to pay for this and pay they did so to be honest with you my only other favorite boss was uh, dr octavius the final boss fight uh his character progression throughout this game which is something we're going to talk about next is insane his boss fight was really fun and enjoyable uh, i liked every single sequence i i especially enjoyed when we could only be in the air i thought that was a cool addition and definitely was quite a challenge i'm not gonna lie to you so yeah dr octavius is for sure my second favorite boss in the game uh kingpin really set i honestly i think it was a kind of a bad thing it set a really high like precedent for the rest of the bosses and not a single one got there the only one that got kind of close was dr octavius which i am still very happy that we got to fight him i honestly didn't know if we were gonna fight him because throughout the whole game he was on our side somehow he knew that we were spider-man and to this day i'm not sure how so the character progression, uh, most importantly from MJ and Peter, as well as Dr. Octavius, was insane. MJ and Peter's, like, it was like an intertwined sort of thing, you know, because they're dating and stuff. And the DLC really pushes them to their limits. Uh, but anyways, this is about the campaign. The campaign itself, MJ and Peter started off, you know, not like, well, it seemed like MJ and Peter didn't want to be with each other, but in the end, they found out that they did. And I was quite surprised that they didn't just have them, like, you know, always together, because that's what it seemed like to me. I'm not sure at what, like, story point this game takes off on, because there's so many that you can't even know, to be honest with you. But MJ and Peter's love affair, not affair, but, you know, love connection was something else. And it was actually on par with Far From Home, in my opinion. Now, Dr. Octavius's character progression is also pretty interesting because when you start off, he is like your best friend, he's your mentor, he is your boss. And you guys are working on trying to save the world together. But as time goes on, you see more about Osborne and how he got screwed over by Osborne. And Dr. Octavius finally ends up putting the freaking octopus tentacle thingies back on and absolutely goes on a rampage so for all those reasons i think the character progression in this game is amazing and nothing really even comes close to it except god of war so yeah guys that was all the reasons why i love spider-man ps4 and why i'm so excited for miles morales i am seriously really looking forward to it i'm let me know in the comments if you guys want me to make a playthrough of it i'm I feel like I really want to. I'm getting the PlayStation camera so you can finally see my emotions. As we play Miles Morales, it's going to be a rocky ride. Lots of crying. I mean, hopefully not, but lots of enjoyment. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe so we can hit 500 subs. Hopefully by when the PS5 launches, a little around there. I'm not I'm not trying to hit 500 by the PS5 launch date no more. I don't think it'll get there. But you know what? You never know. All you got to do is like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I really would appreciate it. All right, guys. Catch you on the next video. Peace out.